You're listening to iCannabisRadio.com. Welcome to this wonderful Monday to In the Lab with Jennifer. The snow is so fluffy and I really wish I was snowboarding, but I did that on Friday and it was waist deep powder. So yes, you should, you should be jealous. Anyway, I'm here with my wonderful co-host, Jill Emero. Hello. And our very, very special guest, Mandy Stanley. Hi. Mandy is going to be talking to us about the realm of caring and um, how the realm of caring is helping all kinds of patients with cannabis you know, from young on, to old. Uh, cannabis is <laughs> Jill is fighting her computer to be quiet. <laughs> That was actually hilarious. Hopefully they got that on camera. Jill's wrestling with her laptop at the moment. Just a second. Um, <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, um, yes, the Realm of Caring is an amazing nonprofit that uh, Mandy will uh, talk about in just a second. But I... I'd start, I thought I'd start off by saying I'm so sorry about last week, but um, there was the last task force meeting that I had to attend, um, and then there was also a snowstorm, and Mandy had the flu, unfortunately. It's so, fun. Yeah. N- it's going around, isn't it? Nasty. It's bad. It's epidemic this year. Is it an epidemic? Yeah. Wow. So. Do you get flu shots? Mm-mm. No. Yeah. No. I don't either. I'm, I don't believe in flu shots. No, I don't either. Yeah. So... Um, But kind of what I wanted to do is uh, talk a little bit about the the task force meetings um, and kind of go over some of the things that happened and some of the recommendations that are that uh, are being made. Um, One of the biggest ones uh, is the 10 milligram cap on edibles. Um, uh, people are not happy about this. And in fact, uh, in the Consumer Safety Task Force group, they actually voted uh, to cap uh, a single piece of edible down. Um, they voted against it. However, they got so many people uh, either reaching out to um, the governor or other people in the task force that wanted a cap. So they had to reintroduce uh, the rule to the main task force, and it passed. So they are capping it. Uh, Jill, I'm going over the 10 milligram cap. Um, people are not happy about it. Uh, I'm happy if nobody ever over medicates again, and I and I think there is something to um, recreational users do not need 300 milli- most do not need 300 milligrams in one bite of an edible. Um, but, uh, people feel 10 milligrams is too low. And again, like we talked about, it just depends on you, your body, your tolerance, what you're going through. I mean, there's so many different things that, uh, you know, a lot of diseases need a very high milligram dose. I mean, we'll talk about that with, with you, Mandy, and some of those patients and, and how much, you know, they really need. Um, another big topic was the DUID bill, <clears throat> which uh, what Holy actually committee, yeah, which actually passed through the House of a five nanogram uh, blood level. Now, for people out there, five nanograms is very very low, uh, considering that cannabis is fat soluble and it stays in your body a lot longer. It's not like alcohol. And so I just definitely want to caution everybody out there to get educated and informed because it, a lot of people, if you do use a lot, um, you're going to have more than five nanograms in your system. And you may not, you know, you're most likely not impaired as we know. Um, but 
if something happens and you get hit by another car or who knows what happens Mm -hmm. and they draw your blood, um, it's not going to be good. So please get educated on that. Um, I do want to say that it did go from per se to permissible inference. What that means is uh, per se law means you're guilty, like... Definitely. Uh, permissible inference means that you can come back with evidence um, talking about your case. And, and I'm not a lawyer, but uh, it's supposed to be better than per se. It, it allows you to defend yourself. So it's much like yeah. if you're a medical patient without a red card, you can go to court and defend yourself. And it's same type of concept. Morgan Carroll, though, is um, looking at introducing an amendment to exempt medical patients. Good. So if everybody could email Morgan and let her know you support that. And Very important. We will let you know. Um, it's going to appropriations next, so there's no testimony at that meeting, and I would advise not wasting your time to go down there for that one, but we'll let you know when it's going to hit the next committee um, and give you all the information to email everybody. Yes. I mean, this is a big deal. This is something that you cannot uh, leave other people to take care of for you. You really need to stay involved with this. Um, blood draws are, are brutal. And, um, you know, it's, it's just not good all around. Um, we just need a scientific study. But no one wants to hear about the, the science. They don't care. They just want to, you know, they don't like cannabis. And they just want to, you know, figure out how it can make it harder for people to use cannabis. So anywho, what else? Um, I talked about the milligram max, the DUID. What else do you just stick us out your mind for task force? Well, and kind of back to the milligram thing. Um, this is not saying you can't have a 300 milligram edible. It's saying that that packaging is going to have to say that there's 30 servings in that one package. Um, And this is another reason to keep your medical card because this does not impact um, medical. And as much as people think that we're going to be left without any medical marijuana dispensaries, that may happen over time. But immediately when you see all of these different localities having bans, it means that your center is going to stay a medical marijuana center. Mm, Um, And so you will need to keep a hold of that card. So whatever rights we can go and lobby the legislature for for those cards is very very important to do um the other things from the task force science wise there's very little there oh yeah i didn't even go into how much they want to do testing because it's just a joke i think they wanted to mandate like three times a year random testing really? and i'm like really hmm yeah it's kind of, um, however, they did get a lot of pushback from the public um, and a lot of people that uh, have been sending in stuff regarding that there should be more testing and everything. Like edibles will have to test every batch. Um, but again, a lot can happen from batch to, to finished product. And so I tried to explain that to them. But I'll be doing my own lobbying um, for testing and getting all these people in the legislature, uh, you know, educated on it and stuff. But it's incredible. But what other, like, main things stood out to you? Not maybe science, but... Well, the maintaining vertical integration, which was a very heated debate, and there are different opinions all around. But I personally feel like caregivers were kind of left out of 1284, and they're being left out again. And the ability to just be a grower is not something that we're going to see happen anytime soon. Um, And that was something I was disappointed about. But I understand also where industry comes from saying, you know, we need some time to sort this out. So that was probably the most heated topic of all. And what we mean by vertical integration is um, when medical marijuana uh, got the rules going 1284 in 2010, um, the cops and people that were going to regulate it uh, felt that vertical integration, meaning you have to grow your own to have a dispensary. So if you have a dispensary, you have to have a grow and vice versa, that it would help uh, regulation. Okay, well, no other industry, except I think, wait a second, somebody brought up farmer's market. (laughs) (laughs) That's not required, though. Right. But anyway, no other, nothing, nothing else is, 
is vertical. However, uh, there was a lot of people lobbying or or are for vertical integration because they've busted their butt the last three, uh, two years, three years, p- getting it together. And it's like, wait a second, you just told us we had to do this. Now you're saying, you know, we'll just take on the liquor model, which is, you know, you can have wholesale distributor or whatever. So they decided to do a sunset review in three years. So three years, they're going to – at least this is a recommendation to the legislature. Legislature might change it because did you see the Denver Post article? Mm-hmm. Basically saying that, wow, create a full-on monopoly for um, medical marijuana centers now that want to go to rec centers or adult use centers. So, uh, yeah, that was that was big. But it is sad because I know that you meet growers, and to give you an example, they're like engineers. Like, they don't want to talk to – they don't want a retail store. They just want to grow. They love plants. Mm -hmm. And then vice versa. The retail people don't know anything about growing. And as we've talked about a million times on this show, it's hard to grow. It is so hard to grow, especially on a big big scale. So how sad that these these people that, you know, just want to grow can't just grow and vice versa um, with the retail store. So that was a big hot topic. So let's get into – uh, Mandy, why don't you start, um, tell us, uh, what the realm of caring is and we'll go from there. Um, the realm of caring is a nonprofit organization. Um, it's an educational approval based system that's run through in dispensary in Colorado Springs that approves patients on a case by case basis to receive, um, cannabis oil, high concentrated THC, CBD concentrated oil for um, whatever their situation may be, cancer, lupus, Crohn's, epilepsy. Okay, so if I'm a, so let's say that I'm listening right now and and, uh, I think I might qualify for this program. And what it is is instead of paying for oil um, up to $70 a gram, um, they qualify and then they pay $2 a gram. $2 a gram. Yeah. So that is gi- big difference. gigantic, gigantic. So, okay, so I listen and, and I think I might qualify. Uh, how, do I, how do I start? Where do I go? Um, there's a couple different ways. You can go to therealmofcaring.com and you can send an email to that, which comes straight to me. Okay. Or you can go through in dispensary, which is where they have the applications there. Okay, so in dispensary <coughs> is a uh, dispensary located in Colorado Springs. So you can either go to the realm of caring.com, R E A L M O F C A R I N G.com, realm of caring.com, or in dispensary, I N D I S P E N S A R Y, in dispensary in Colorado Springs. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you fill out an application. And then after they fill out an application, then they're notified whether they can. If they are approved for um, the realm of caring program or not. Okay. Um, usually anybody with a life-limited disease is our top priority. Of course. Anybody, okay. um, again, cancer, epilepsy. Um, and this does go for all ages. We do have a high CBD strand okay. um, that we, uh, depending on a kiddo's situation, what their weight is, uh, we dose them out on that. Okay. Um, everybody... Adults and kids are dosed out completely different. Okay. Um, what is your uh, oldest patient? What age? Oldest patient? Yeah. Would you 78. say? 78. 78. Mm-hmm. And youngest? <sighs> the youngest will be three. We have somebody who's three years old that's coming on with us. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay, so here's how I found out about the Roma Caring. Um, I actually was, um, my first part on radio was uh, for um, American Weed Radio, and it was the Stanley Brothers, and they wanted to do uh, science, a part of their show for science, so they called it Science Corner. And um, my chemist at the time, Chris, and I were on that show. And so I got introduced uh, to the brothers, which uh, Mandy is married to one of the brothers, Joel. And so I, I met uh, Mandy then shortly thereafter and heard about the realm of caring and um, have seen uh, people 
you know, go through the program. Um, and it's just absolutely amazing. And no one, no one else is doing this. And this is extremely, extremely important. Um, and it's also is a nonprofit. However, um, the laws state mm -hmm. that you can't give away right. medical marijuana. So that's why they have to charge the $2 plus that's probably just the very cost of the, the receptacle. All that really stuff. Yeah. All so, that cost. so, um, that's just that's just nuts. And last summer, um, the end of the summer, I got to visit the greenhouse, and oh my god, it's amazing, huh? I I'm so proud of them. They've done so good. Oh my They've god, been great. I've never been. I don't even. I can't even explain it. Just walking into the greenhouse is just like I don't know. Just the energy is just overwhelming. Yeah. And to see how much time mm -hmm. it takes this family and these brothers to, to do this, uh, is, is unbelievable. And so I want people to donate, even if you can only donate a dollar, but if you can donate at all, you can go to the realm of and click on donate and, um, any amount of money helps. It goes straight to, to helping these patients get, uh, their medicine for $2 a gram. And we are going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Blue Sage Microbes unveils the ultimate in superior soil, Ideal Soil, a 16-quart bag of the best growing soil ever engineered. Superior plant health and vitality is a direct result of the structure and chemistry of your soil. How good is your growing soil? Is your growing soil really balanced? How do you know? Well, Blue Sage Microbes has a newly designed growing soil that is the most advanced growing medium ever offered for cannabis cultivation. This is the only brand in the marketplace that provides growers with an ideal soil structure designed to work specifically with their cultivation systems. You will have your best grow results ever. Call now for a special introductory offer, 888 959 8 551 or log on to bluesagemicrobes.com and experience a new level in growing. That's 888-959-8551. Tired of dispensary hopping? Trying to find quality meds? Look no further and get to know Greenworks. Our shops are stocked with over 20 strains of organically grown meds, including R4, the highest testing CBD strain in Colorado. Yes, we back up our quality with testing. While Greenworks offers only the highest quality meds, we don't believe in high prices, with eighths ranging from $20 to $40 and ounces capped at $175. With two centers in Denver and one in Glenwood Springs, we're likely closer than you think. Call 303-647-5210 to find the location nearest you. <laughs> Sorry, had to ditch the earrings. Alrighty. So, I want to get back to... Um, the two dollar price. Um, of course, that's subject to change depending on um, of you know cost of 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 things. But I uh, the bit the the reason I wanted people to know or that two dollar range is that literally CBD especially is very 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 hard to find, and um, Colorado really is the only state. I mean, even p surpassing Israel. The rest of the country uh, for CBD strains and really the in dispensary is is one of the only uh, people that I know of that are even growing such high CBD now also with CBD you get a very y low yield off these plants mm -hmm. so again um, people outright uh, probably could charge about seventy dollars a gram Easy. so I, so I want people to understand that for the realm of caring, just doing it for two dollars is incredible, and that your money, um, your donations are, will be well appreciated. And um, you know, I'll hope to share some of those stories on this radio show. But um, let's talk about um, first why why I'm so fan fascinated by this um, is kids. 
um, mm-hmm. and uh, specifically kids with Dravet syndrome. Dravet syndrome is one of the worst form of um, epilepsy and kids are born with it. They have about 60 to 100 seizures a day. And what this cannabis oil that that the Realm of Caring makes called Realm Oil is, I mean, so I'll let Mandy talk about that, but let's talk about um, Charlotte and how the first time she took it, I mean. Love Charlotte. Yeah. Um, they, and when Charlotte first started. So go back and talk about Charlotte because I want to <coughs> make sure people know who that is. Um, Charlotte is, well, she's now six. When she started with us, she was five. Um, immediately when she started, they saw results. So she went like a week, she, I think, without a seizure, yes. didn't she? She went seven days. Oh, my God. The first time having this high CBD, low THC cannabis oil. And she's never gone that long without having a seizure. And how did Paige find CBD? They were actually – Paige was connected to Joel through a mutual friend. Okay. Um, Joel went over and and talked to Paige. um, And most parents are kind of uncomfortable when they start off and not knowing what they're getting into, you know. Especially if they never you know, getting into yeah. and understandably so, um, with the reputation that it has, but it is, as we all know, completely safe. Yes, uh, <laughs> more than safe, I would say. But so uh, it um, did take them a little while. Everybody is very different, and everybody does have to kind of play around with the dosing. We do start off kids at one milligram a pound of CBD per pound of their weight. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, um, actually, even before that, we have them start just kind of with the end of a toothpick amount to make sure there's no allergies. Oh, okay. And right. then after that, then we we start out one milligram a pound of CBD per pound of their okay. weight. Um, kind of the magic number that we've seen things happen with epileptic kiddos um, is two milligrams of CBD per pound of their weight. Really? Okay. There are patients particularly one that I'm thinking of that's gotten up to 20 to 30 milligrams of CBD per pound of their weight. So that also kind of tells you how big of a playing field there is Yes, that everybody's different and you've got to play around with the dosing to find everybody's magic number. Yes, absolutely. Because there's no, there's no, again, there's no guide right now. Right. We are literally on. Right. And not knowing what each CBD is doing and for what diagnosis Sure. Case now, maybe. what are those ratios? So when you talk about, you know, uh, two milligrams per body w- body weight or body pound of body weight, mm-hmm. uh, w- usually what's the THC kind of li- – li- <laughs> gee, I can't even talk. What milligrams is the THC at or what's the ratio of the two? Um, it usually depends. Every batch is different. Um, we usually see – we have tested much higher, but it's usually anywhere from a 25 to 30 to 1 ratio. Okay, but it's still over a milligram of THC. Oh, yes. In the whole yes. scheme of things. Yes. Because what people want, they what they're asking is, okay, well, is it just CBD? Is it THC? And I, and I try to... And again, we don't know. We need to do more studies, but it's it's an entourage effect with all the cannabinoids. And THC is aiding in epilepsy and keeping the nerves calm. See. There's actually a nine-year-old patient with us who introduced a small amount of THC on top of the CBD oil and saw much better results than just using the CBD oil alone. Interesting. So everybody's very different, again. Right. And it's just playing around with the dosage and how it affects everybody is different. Right. Um, Again, it's um, do you not see hard. do you see changes in patients over time? Do Absolutely. they tend to go up and down in their Absolutely. needs? Absolutely. Yep. Um, a lot of our kids have improved significantly in their cognitive skills. Um, we so have, talk a little bit about that. We our main kids that we have are epileptic. Okay. Um, we do have um, well, we will be having um, a three year old cancer patient come on with us, um, but we do have there's juvenile Batten's disease, which is in What's that yeah. exactly? Juvenile Batten's disease is where their body does not um, produce a fatty protein, and it starts slowly shutting down. Uh, the first thing that goes is their vision, oh. um, and they, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And epilepsy is actually one of the things that kicks in Oh, later down. Yeah. Oh, as a side effect. Yeah. And so what um, – is that a neurological disease mm-hmm. too? Okay. And then um, – so how and who – how did you, how did they find you guys? Actually, there is a face group. Or f- face group. 
<laughs> Facebook group. Right. Um, the Pediatrics for Cannabis Facebook group, and that's actually how she found us. Okay, so yes, there's a, uh, a wonderful uh, group on Facebook called Pediatric Cannabis Therapy. Please, if you do not have a child that is suffering from a debilitating disease, mm-hmm. do not. This group is solely for parents, parents that um, need some help and are, uh, are wanting to try cannabis or at least hearing about trying cannabis. It doesn't mean you get on and you have to try it. But it's a great group of people started by a mother um, mm-hmm. who will be on next week that uh, her son, oh, my God, when I saw the, the, the video of that, which we'll be putting the video on. Yeah, I mean, it's it's incredible how far her son's come. But this group is amazing. So if you, you're out there and you're, you're thinking about this or anything, um, go ahead and, and try to join that group. Now, the group is not for promoting Yes, um, yeah. it's strictly adult use for, or anything like that. It's and and, and it's strictly for, for for children. It is not for adults um, with debilitating diseases, unfortunately. But anyone can start a group on Facebook. So um, we might want to think about that too. Starting an adult. Uh, and there is actually Charlotte and Zakai's story on a YouTube video. Yes, that we've put out, and it's called Charlotte and Zakai's Journey. If anybody wants to. Yes, Look at so that. put in YouTube, and then we'll also list it on the iCannabis Radio site. Um, I believe I've listed on the Can Labs Facebook as well, but um, you can go to that and just kind of see about Charlotte and Zakai's um, journey. They're also both uh, both mothers will be on the radio next week, so I don't want to talk too much about those specific stories because I want them to be able to share it. What um, what is the biggest challenge you're you're having right now with this since it's so new um one of the biggest challenges is trying to um help people understand what it really takes uh to make this oil and how much product it actually takes to make this oil it's not something especially cbd um that's stockpiled um, right. It's at all. Um, at the beginning, we didn't know what CBD was doing, and now we do. But when a patient gets their red card and they sign up with us, then we can start growing their plants. It's but not, not until then. And not how, till then. Yeah. Right. And how many months is that? In really? Four or five months. Four or five so months. So it's not something where people can start immediately right. because we have to be approved to grow their plants for them first. Um now, so that will all change when Amendment 64 kicks in. Right. Um, but as far as it works now, yeah, so that's that's the misconception is people with drugs, they just go and they, you, you have a plethora of drugs you can get. It's not like right. that. Although I would say I'm not sure that's going to change with 64 because these are two separate systems, and especially for parents dosing their children oh, with you're cannabis, right. you're they right. are going to want to stay medical. You're right. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. that is. As a red card, card yeah, holder. Yeah, they're going to want to stay red card holders. And so that system until, you know, we go a few years and make some changes and make it easier for patients, I would say as a parent, you definitely want your child on Yeah, the I would not suggest anybody. And actually at this point, we won't work. We cannot and won't work with right. anybody who does not hold. Hold a red card. Well, I was going to ask you that too. In the future as well. Is how supportive are these um families, doctors in this, and how often are they interacting with you? Um, There's one doctor uh, specifically in the Springs. Um, We won't say his name just in case. But if you you are a parent and and want to inquire about that, you can always get a hold of us. She is a Stanford um, graduate. She uh, has offered to do follow-up Free follow-up studies with our oh patients. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. And as well as observational studies. She's great. That's fantastic. And then Dr. Shackelford, of course. And Dr. Shackelford, who's up in Denver. But that's about it. I mean, and, really. Yeah. We, we need we need <clears throat> doctors to to take a chance on this and really, right. really come well, to Colorado and, and, and figure this that's out. That's one of the things, actually, I'm putting together right now really? is packets. Right. For doctors that shows different test results of high CBD because kids are the ones that have such a hard time in getting their red card. And what if there was an epileptic patient who's six months old 
who could get started on cannabis immediately before trying all the, the endless pharmaceuticals and the, all the brain damage and everything that's done. Oh my God. After, so it's you know, giving it, brain damage, these yeah. drugs? Okay, so let's talk about a little bit of that. So when you, you're diagnosed with epilepsy or whatever, they give you a standard regime of drugs, I can imagine, right? Yeah. And so... One like, mom actually just expressed to me... <clears throat> Uh, her her kiddo was nine months old, and they said it was – they were giving her a certain medication. I won't say what it is, but that this is going to be like giving her a six-pack of beer. What? Is what the doctor flat out told her. And she said after that she never saw her daughter again. Oh, my that God. That she was just lost in her head, and now they're trying to get her back. So. Oh, my <laughs> God. So, yeah, if they can try – They See, can do these and hand these drugs out. There's older epileptic epileptic <laughs> right <laughs> epileptic patients who have been on certain benzos for so long that it would be dangerous to take them off. Oh, really? So a lot of them, as they get older, will get they can't come off of some of these these certain drugs. Now, what are other side effects from these drugs for these kids? Just they're spaced Loopy. out, aren't they? They're just not All there. the time. They're not there. And people They've are worried about not getting high walking. from cannabis. They're not talking. They're not eating. Um, a good portion of patients have to get a feeding tube because they stop eating. Which so is great because THC stimulates. THC stimulates appetite. Which if you're not eating, you're not getting better. Right. <laughs> Your body is And is every slowly. seizure is damaging. And is it really? Yeah. What but then do? doctors get into it. It seems that they get into a situation where they either let them seize or they get them to a point where they're so loopy and drowsy that they won't seize. But then, but the third. then the kids just right. slowly lose themselves over time. So, oh my God, that's just heartbreaking, heartbreaking. And on that, we'll take a break. The Chocolatiers at Incredibles are dedicated to crafting the finest chocolate from high quality ingredients to ensure the greatest possible medicated edibles in the world. Consistency and quality are top priority. Lab testing on each and every batch. Rick and Josh have been making non-medicated chocolates for years for such retail outlets as Whole Foods and Vitamin Cottage. Today we are focused on crafting our award-winning medicated incredible chocolate bars. We are professional bakers and we believe food should be made from scratch. We get Guarantee your satisfaction. Have an incredible day. Catapunch is a delicious and effective medical marijuana beverage proudly made right here in Colorado. Each bottle is freshly infused with 100% pure flower extract from the highest grade marijuana plants available today. Using proprietary extraction methods, every bottle of Catapunch is consistently and reliably infused with an exact milligram dosage that you can count on to relieve your symptoms each and every time. Catapunch is delicious. There's never any medicine-y taste. We use only 100% cannabis flowers. No trim or byproducts are ever used in Catapunch. It does not require refrigeration and comes in convenient, resealable, multi-dose bottles from 60 milligrams to 200 milligrams. We have drinks with dosage that works best for you. Catapunch is available in a variety of delicious flavors like black cherry, watermelon, pineapple mango, and blue raspberry. And we now have strain-specific beverages available just for you. Catapunch is delicious, convenient, consistent, and effective. Give it a try and experience the Catapunch difference. So, um, so we're going to post that, uh, video, but again, it's Charlotte's web and Zakai's Z-A-K-I-S or, you know, plural journey, not plural, but Charlotte and Zakai's whatever. journey. Yeah. Charlotte's web and Zakai's journey. It's on YouTube. If you type in Charlotte and Zakai journey, it'll come up. Um, so that'll give people more information. Also, we're going to, we're going to list it on our um, I cannabis radio website. So, um, okay. Well, so let's, let's go. I was just going to say, I just found an article about cannabinoids and epilepsy and it's the CBDV, which is most effective in reducing seizures. And in, let's see, in around one third of cases currently available, pharmaceuticals do not work cause serious side effects and increase fatalities. Oh. 
And that's from Dr. Ben Wally, who also worked with um, Dr. Raphael Mel- I can never say his name right, Ma- Melaklam, who is an Israeli researcher. Okay. And he's amazing. He has done so much work in this area. So let's in- see if we can get that posted or, or somehow if people want that. Um, that's that's crazy. Well, let's talk about too. Let's go back to you were talking about how um, people don't understand all the work that goes into it. So once once you you and and again now there's a waiting list for right? CBD for CBD. Mm-hmm. So um, so basically, but if there wasn't, I mean, you you apply, but then they have to grow your plants. So you're looking at four or five months. Now, I know that I worked with. Uh, I just I Can Labs does the testing for all of of this oil, so these parents um, can dose it. And actually, we pill it out for them. Oh, do you pill it out yeah. for them? That's awesome. There's two parents who are on a dilution of 100 milligrams per gram. Okay. But then the other ones after that, we pill out based oh on their weight. God. So even so more each work. capsule is weighed out individually. Wow. And then packaged, uh, and then they pick it up at the dispensary. So I can tell you that I probably see Mandy, <laughs> Joel, Jesse. I see them, I mean, almost every single day they're up at my lab dropping off samples, and they are all in Colorado Springs. My lab is in Denver. They drive probably almost uh, an hour and a half, two-hour round trip every day to uh, get this oil tested so they can specifically dose for these kids. So, um, and they're not getting paid for that. So again, please donate at therealmofcaring.com or if you're in, or if you have any more questions and don't want to, you know, call them directly, please uh, reach out to me, Jennifer, G-E-N-I-F-E-R at canlabs.com and I can talk to you uh, more about this. But um so then once they're on your program, then they pick up, like you said, you, you do all the work, put it into pill form, and then they pick it up at, at in dispensary. At in dispensary. Mm-hmm. By state laws, okay. we have to run everything through a dispensary for tracking reasons. Right. Okay. Um, but then they stay in close contact with me, um, let me know how they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we start everybody, well, adult patients, we start off at 10 milligrams, um, see how they do with that, and then increase them. Okay. How they do, and then the kids kind of the same way, but start them off differently. Okay. And it's interesting that before the last break, um, you talked about how how these drugs are giving so many side effects. And, and in fact, I mean, it doesn't even sound like they're working half the time. Um, I know that out there, parents, you know, there's been 80 years of propaganda about cannabis. 80 years. Do not believe any of it. Mm -hmm. Um, Please get educated whether you're sick or not, because chances are you or somebody you love is going to be sick and going to be needing it because uh, our country, our world is sick and pharmaceuticals are not the answer answer in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. In some cases, they definitely are and they they have prolonged life. So I'm not fully, um, you know, a pill hater, but they do uh, cause a lot of side effects in, in most everyone, some kind of side effect. And with cannabis, there's four non-threatening side effects. And most of these side effects are, are, are good. For instance, sleepiness, um, appetite, uh, stimulant. If you have cancer or dravet, I mean, any of these, you're sick, you don't want to eat, it will stimulate your, your appetite. Um, short-term memory loss, well, big deal. If you're sick, who cares? I mean, you really probably don't want to remember too much anyway. And then <laughs> uh, the fourth one is oh, paranoia. But that paranoia mainly comes with high, high THC yeah. with no CBD. So we're really not talking about that with your medicine. I think I've only seen medicine. that with one patient. Really, one patient. That's and what did they say? Just That they just struggled with a little bit of um, – paranoia but that was it Mm -hmm. i mean and they still pushed it and they actually and then they built up a tolerance and now they do just fine that's amazing so 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 parents don't worry that oh my god i'm giving my kid you know marijuana and they're getting high high is all means altered state of mind something that caffeine exercise sugar pharma all of that can cause an altered state of mind high that's right 
high. Right. So it's not a damaging high. Right. And, and so what if they're are having scared of it? Feel and better. Like for instance, with the nine month old that the doctor said this is gonna be like giving her a six pack of beer. That or <laughs> or maybe a, a little ch- small chance of them something. getting a little bit and they don't know what that high. is though. They don't know what it is. It's just, but it, but to give you an example too, like if I take Vi- – I'm sick. I have major pain. I broke my arm or something. And I take Vicodin. You don't feel the Vicodin. If I take Vicodin and I don't have pain, yes, you might feel a high, if you will. Right. These kids are sick, and, and they're not going to understand what it is anyway. And even if they did, so what if they feel better? Right. Mind, body. If your mind feels better, your body is going to feel better. Right. Plain and simple. Mm-hmm. I agree. So what's been the best thing? There's lots of those. Right. One of the hardest things, though, is getting you get attached to I'm sure. to people. There was one lady, um, Susan, she had five different types of cancer. Oh, my God. And she had a three-year-old, and you get attached to Right, the family and the everything. The family and them. And, but the best thing is seeing these kids get their lives back. I mean, they're learning to talk again, learning to walk again. It's amazing. Can you imagine, amazing. Jill, like if you, your kid, like you've never seen them smile or anything because they just see us all day long. And just that helpless feeling as a mom. No, I walk into my house every day grateful that my children are healthy and mm-hmm. we have food and I can't even imagine. Like, I can't either. I can't. No. We I actually can't. lost a child about seven years ago and just that helpless feeling one day as a parent and can't do anything for your kid. I can't imagine feeling that on an everyday basis, whether it's cancer or epilepsy, any of that. Right. And seeing these kids get their lives back is just absolutely amazing. I just so want, as we talked about uh, over the break, to get more doctors involved, and I think that's fantastic. So you're getting together an informational packet to send to doctors to to try to get them. To go and meet with them and explain it, yeah. Show them different, numerous different test results showing that it's high CBD. Right. Um, who we are, the success stories that we have. The video. To show them the video. Yes, absolutely. Um, just to just to do as much as we can to make it known. Right. That this is something that's an even if it's just in the back of a mind or if a doctor's mind. Right. And the right, right situation comes up along. I mean, it's just people again, whether they're sick or whether they're not sick, they need to educate themselves. Um, on the advantages to cannabis and not just CBD. CBD is huge, um, but THC is, is aiding in right. a lot of it too. Well, and that's cancer. only two out of over a hundred. Uh, imagine all the cannabinoids that are going to come back into the plant when we're not breeding for right. h- just high THC. I mean, because right. that's what's happened. We've bred for high THC for decades and, and I can't even imagine the rest, like she just said, CBDV. Right. Um, you know, and then you have THCV, which is an appetite uh, suppressant that works the opposite of THC. And again, they all work together. So I just, you know, my my excitement when legalization uh, came November 6th was that we're going to be able to study this mm-hmm. plan now without be able to test risking going to jail, which is ludicrous. Well, and this is totally off topic, but did you see the vet up north who's being prosecuted? He has PTSD. <gasps> what? And he is being prosecuted. I pros- saw that. So oh, my God. That in was, really? Yes. Okay, so give a little summary, Meth Samantha. capital of the world. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, I'll have to look it up again, but um, it, it was a, a soldier with PTSD um, who vet with PTSD who can't get a red card because PTSD is not a condition and was busted up in Greeley for growing his own. So it's just one of the benefits to allowing this for adult use is that we don't have to deal with CDPHG and trying to convince them that we have double blind controlled studies, which we don't have because NIDA won't allow them. So the prohibition against research has been horrific. And I unfortunately am not as optimistic that we're going to see a ton of research done because again, the school's are not willing to do this. This is going to have yeah. to come from private, private labs private in money. the state. 
Private, private money. money. Well, you know what, though? There's a lot of people out there with private money that understand and are educated on this. And I believe that, um, you know, once we get going, that private money will come and we'll be able to do it. Because I'm telling you what, the way the world is going now, I mean, we're we're just sick. I mean, I, I don't I, I know that it seems like more people are sick because there's more people on the earth now. But it just seems to me like everybody I know is somehow, some way. Look at kids with autism. It's I know. one in a yeah. hundred now. That's one insane. One in a hundred. That is. I didn't. I don't even think I knew or knew I knew an a uh, 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 child with autism when I was younger. I didn't. And I'm not sure if it's just because they weren't diagnosed, didn't know, they were misdiagnosed. Yeah, or something because I don't. And what are they attributing? Isn't that? A, aren't they attributing that to far? Um, I could have a whole show on taping. that, and that's really <laughs> off topic. Okay, sorry. But when we talk about um, the number of immunizations the kids have, yeah, like when it, I you and I <laughs> were kids, we had something like 25 total immunizations in our lifetime, and now the schedule is 95 to 115 oh my that we're God. giving kids. I just really? talked to a couple parents, actually, the DTP. Sure. See, I don't know because I don't have kids, so you guys will have to fill me in on that. I have no idea. Well, yeah, so it, it's very and they're forced to right because I see these posts on Facebook where uh, parents are upset because they're being forced to do something that they don't want to do, or their kids can't go to that. Well, school. I'm in Boulder does. County, and you're allowed to exempt you yourself. Can sign off on it, yeah, for and being say, religious or personal. It doesn't even have to be religious; it can just be personal mm -hmm. reasons. Well, and that's good. But Boulder's very progressive, though. I mean, we're talking. I think about this one of the is most Colorado state law too, though. I oh, think Colorado yeah. state law says that you can exempt. And the thing as a parent is that's one of the toughest decisions you ever make. Yeah. Like my child gets polio or my child gets autism. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Take your pick. you know, but one of the things you can do if you don't vaccinate your children is uh, sign up with your county health department and they'll mm -hmm. tell you when there's outbreaks. Uh, oh, measles really? or mumps. Schools and then, are pretty good about that. And then too. you can decide. And the thing is, autism is usually diagnosed between the ages of three and four. So I, as a parent, wanted to wait till after that to vaccinate my kids if I was ever going to. Right. So, um, God, and see, you, again, another brainwash. Some doctors won't been... even see you if you don't. Mm -hmm. So it is, there's pressure from everywhere. But like I said, that's a whole nother show and has nothing God, to do with cannabis. I totally. So. Well, autism does. It's been it's been helping kids with autism. It's been helping people with ALS. I mean, why don't you list some of the some of the besides cancer and and seizure <coughs> disorders? What are some of the other stuff? Um, geez, there's a lot. Did, I know that, that top of my head, juvenile bat that one, um, right? Which is very rare. But um, MS is a big one. MS, yep. Um, chronic pain, right? Kind of a given. Um, because ALS, epilepsy, lupus, Crohn's disease. Lupus, Crohn's, lupus is a that's big right. One. Um, Crohn's disease is something that is helping immensely as well. I probably know people they, in high school that has Crohn's disease too. Yeah, that's a big one. Ugh, it does not have to do with your, what is Crohn's disease again? Kind of like irritable bowel, irritable right. bowel syndrome. syndrome. Yeah. yeah. See, in my family, diverticulitis runs in that, with sort of the polyps mm. in your, your colon. And my mom or my grandma can't have anything with seeds or any small objects because it it's get, gets up there. Mm. But that's, you know, that's a lot of that is from, um, I think, just uh, meat and potatoes and not a lot of raw plants. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Really I mean, that's just speculation there, but um, I know that I've been, you know, looking out for it. So, well, and Crohn's can be fatal. Yeah, I mean, people like to make fun of IBS, but it can be very, very, it can very, be very painful. As yeah. well. Oh, it's uh, no, I've heard it's awful. I would, yeah, I would definitely not. That and then. Um, God, just just stuff arthritis that you don't think about it. Arthritis, arthritis too, arthritis which can come huge. from inside and topicals. Right. Which topicals don't make you high, and we'll be talking in a few weeks uh, with some topical makers to talk about why it doesn't make you high and but why it works. Um, stuttering. So uh. I've talked to a few people that um, have come in contact with people that use cannabis for stuttering, and mm -hmm. literally helps the, helps them out mm -hmm. because. You know, the big picture is it brings your, your body back to homeostasis. So, mm -hmm. you know, some of uh, the rapid firing of your neurotransmitters or whatever that 
that that contribute to to a lot of these diseases. But again, I mean, it's just very important to to be educated with this. So you know, if something happens to your family member, that you can get jump right on it. And you know, a lot of a lot of people. I mean, it's going to be hard to combat that propaganda to have kids try this instead of the drugs. But right. that's why we're why you're doing what you're doing and we're doing what we're doing is to at least give them the choice to, yeah. to, 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 to help with that. Um, oh, it's just, I just can't explain how much I've learned in the last three years and continue to learn it's every endless. day I learn something. Endless. It is endless. Well, what do you want, what do you want people to know um, about uh, the realm of carrying away? Oh, let's talk about juicing. Sorry to bounce around, but let's talk about juicing a bit. Do we have to break already? Oh, five minutes late. Chris, <laughs> I didn't see the hand motion. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did look at you. Sorry. All right, we'll go to break. We'll be right back. <laughs> In Dispensary in Colorado Springs is proud to support Overgrow the Radio. With two locations in Colorado Springs, In Dispensary invites you to discover what true selection and values feel like. Always featuring an incredible array of Stanley Brothers medicine as well as full line of edible and infused products. In Dispensary is open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week, 364 days a year. You owe it to your health and well-being to discover In Dispensary. West Side location at 3044 West Colorado and East Side location at 3031 East East Platte in Colorado Springs. Indispensary is your destination for indispensable quality medicine. Ivita Wellness is committed to compassionate patient care while providing the highest quality medicine at an affordable price. At Ivita Wellness, patients can get top shelf ounces for $150 every day. Ivita Wellness also carries pharmaceutical grade pure CO2 oil. Ivita Wellness is located in Uptown Denver on 1616 Pearl Street. Open seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can reach us at 303-952-9150 or our website at www.ivitawellness.com. Ivita Wellness is Denver's Compassionate Care Center. I'm Gary Johnson, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio, and I want to say, talk it up, Colorado. Hi, <laughs> better. Chris is not giving me the proper hand signals today. I'm blaming you. I think you're just not paying attention. <laughs> me not pay attention? What are you talking about? Come on now. Okay. So juicing. We don't know a ton about it yet. There's know, been recently quite a few articles that have been really good, and I am going to bring you some things to test for me to see. But um, the assumption is that since CBD levels are higher in plants um, in the flowering phase, so early phase, and then okay. THC increases, that you can juice throughout its flowering life and get high CBD without having to finish the plant or process the oil. So that has a lot of potential, the more we can research, to replace some of these really expensive oils. So, yes. And that's something you know parents can do is grow sure. one plant and continually keep it in veg and juice yourself. So mm, we, we need idea. to learn more about it, though, before yeah, so, we recommend that to anyone. So 64, Amendment 64 in Colorado allows you to... Um, carry an ounce of cannabis and also grow uh, six plants, three plants in veg, in veg, right? I don't grow, so I don't know. But three plants flowering, you I think it that. is. 64, say three and three. Three and three, yeah. Okay. So just so people know that, it, yeah, if you do, if you're, if you're a parent here in Colorado, that uh, once we do some things with juicing, then like she said, you can continually, you know, grow your six plants and then you don't have to know how to to make oil. So that would be amazing if we could do that. Um, but uh, yeah, juicing is fairly new. And just to remind everyone out there that THC and CBD and the other cannabinoids are not naturally occurring in the plant. It's actually the as the acidic form, so THCA, CBDA. They also have uh, specific medicinal um, purposes, and those go away as soon as you heat, light, or vaporize. So that's why juicing. Uh, plus, it doesn't give you the high, if you will, because there's no THC in it. It's just THCA. So. Um, 
I am going to uh, test some stuff that um, Jill has, and we'll get back to you on uh, the cannabinoid counts and stuff on that. But I want to take the rest of the time, Mandy, for you to talk about, um, I don't know, just just the experience, how people can help, how people can get involved. I mean, if, if they can't donate money, can they donate time? Can they, I mean, what can, what can people do to help you? Because it's just Mandy, um, basically. I mean, Mandy runs it, but, you know, all the brothers and everything. I mean, it takes a lot of people that are not getting paid for for the, this this oil for these for these kids and patients, uh, the the realm is still really new, right? Um, so trying to get the back end of it all set up. Actually, Heather um, Jackson has just recently come on board with me, which is awesome. Um, Heather is Zakai's great. mom, yeah. so she's going to be helping you. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's got a five hundred one c three nonprofit for Doza syndrome, which is a type of epilepsy, right? And so she's very educated and knowledgeable in that area, which is, has been a huge help already. Um, so back in. So what about, uh, do you need people, maybe they could donate time to help you with a website. Maybe they could donate time to... Website is actually something that we are looking for. I just want to tell everybody that the address on the Realm of Caring website is not a good address. Okay. Do not mail anything there. Do not go by there. Um It's not a good address. Okay, yeah. So what you need to be doing is emailing. Yes. Um, The email or there is a uh, 800 number that we've not put out just yet. It's 888-995-THE-REALM. Okay, so give me all those numbers. Uh 888-995-THE-REALM. So isn't that too too many many numbers? numbers. Yeah, yeah, but it's through a company called Grasshopper. It works. Oh, really? That's cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. The Realm. T-H-E-R-E-A-L-M. Okay, so let's talk about that. So, because I bet there's a lot of people out there that maybe can't give money, but they could give, you know, maybe there's a web developer out there. Yeah, we are actually looking for somebody to update, to donate some of their time to uh, update our website. That would be fantastic. Um, and then, of course, we would talk about how they helped on, right. the, on the air, and we would plug them. Right. Also, why not a graphic designer maybe helping right. you do some, you know, whatever it is. Right. I mean... I know that I haven't been able to give a lot of money in my life, but uh, time, I can give a lot of time, so I know that there's people out there. But you can donate as little, like I said, as a dollar, ten dollars, hundred dollars. I mean, it all adds up. It does. It does. And especially being so new, sure, having something that's so expensive to make, to have, to give, um, is tough. It's tough. And... um, the brothers have worked their butt off to yes, continuously have. give that product to make the oil, which is, we could not do this without them. No. Could not do this without them. Could not do this without Can Labs either. Thank you. But you guys pay me. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I can't claim. I do some some stuff for for uh, free, like expediting and stuff like that. Yeah, but which I, is huge because a lot of times we'll run into a, a situation where a parent has got to have test re- results that day. So I know how to pill it out so they can have it by that evening so they don't run out. Right. Because if an epileptic patient is taking this oil, they've been consistent with their seizure activity. If they were to stop, we don't know what would happen. We're not doctors. We don't claim to be doctors. Right. But we're not willing to take that chance. Right. So, And that's also a reason, again, um, one of the reasons there's that CBD waiting list as well. Right. To make sure um, we've got to make sure we've got enough for the patients that we've already committed to. Now it's a waiting list to wait for the plants to grow. You know what else, too? If you're out there in another wherever you are, I mean, I'm sure that I was talking earlier about, God, if people in Colorado could donate, if you have a high strain of uh, CBD or or even even not even a high, uh, just some strain, uh, some some uh, potency of CBD that that could help. I mean, they could donate that. Um, that kind of thing. Um, but I did want to ask you how, what is the farthest away somebody has contacted you, Mandy? The furthest away, um, I would have to say is Australia. Australia. I've talked to people in Australia, Canada, across the States, across, I mean, it's been. Worldwide. And it's not even just, it's, but just people who, 
um, are interested or, or trying to anybody who's in a different state where it's not legal. Right. Um, there are things that they can do to meet with their doctors to make more awareness so that people don't have to uproot their entire families to move here. Which to people get are doing. People are doing that. Yes. Um, which is fine. We're more than happy sure. to help them. But having kids of our own. <laughs> picking <laughs> Which Mandy up. has three kids and still does all this, which I can barely take care of my dog. <laughs> so that's incredible. Oh, thanks. Um, that's incredible. So that's hard. Was what you're yeah, saying is uprooting a family. It's hard, and I, I, it would. I've, I've seen people do it in within a week, oh after talking God. to them, and they're here. Wow. Um, and I don't know. I uh, bless their hearts. I have no idea how they do it with kids. There's some people who have four or five kids, right? And they move here to get started, and people <clears throat> can bring awareness to the doctors that they work with, with these different circumstances, whether it's epilepsy or cancer, whatever the case may be, to bring awareness to the doctors, to do their research, to get involved and to make the possibilities known to other, a lot of these epileptic patients are in groups with moms in their hometown or in their state, that they get together and help each other out. And this is another thing that they can make, they can spread the word about. I know some of them are in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have two business partners. Both came from Minnesota. One still resides in Minnesota. And um, and uh, he has started the conversation with people. And he found out that somebody close to him, their child had it. And he was like, oh, my God. And I think they actually are on uh, pediatric cannabis therapy. So... People are, you know, regardless of whether they understand it or not, they are getting educated about it and wanting to find out about it. And my my producer just showed me that it's four o'clock. I'm so sad. God, this hour. I have to do the three questions. Really oh quick. yeah. Okay, and back to our right. contest that we're mm-hmm. having, um, which I hope that we'll be able to announce our what we're doing next <laughs> week. I'm so sorry, but it's an awesome contest. So what's up, Jill? Okay, so three questions. What is the average dose of CBD that Realm patients use? And that can go anywhere. You can't get oh, them to answer. They yeah, have to you listen. can't. They have to listen oh, to the Oh, they're going to do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you every you were re asking no, it. No, you said like, this early. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what is hey. the uh, CBD to THC ratio of the Realm oil? Okay. And how many epilepsy patients do not respond to traditional treatment? Wow, those are hard That's ones. That's a good one. You got to listen. Awesome. No, one. hey, I'm all about listening. That's fantastic. I had fantastic. to listen to come up with them, so you're going to listen true. to the answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so say it one more time. What is the average dose of CBD that Realm patients use? Okay. What is the CBD to THC ratio of Realm oil? And how many epilepsy patients do not respond to traditional treatments? Fantastic. I want to talk about more about that. Mandy, please uh, tell us the email you want people to email. Uh, they can email at realmofcaring at gmail.com. Okay. And that comes um, straight to me. Straight so, to and you. And I will be in contact with them. Great. And if anybody has any questions or about the get, getting your actual Colorado red card or anything like that, please mm-hmm. let me know too. Great. And again, uh, realmofcaring.com realmofcaring at gmail.com and the number again was 888-995-THE-REALM. Please donate. Thank you.